Netflix's latest documentary, Our Father, tells the true story of a fertility doctor called Donald Klein who used his own sperm to inseminate his female patients without their consent or knowledge back in the 70s and 80s. Well, throughout the docudrama, the number of children he's believed to have fathered steadily increases and now stands at 94 and counting. Two of those children, Jacoba Ballard and Jason Hyatt, join us in just a moment. First, let's take a look at this shocking story. It's an extraordinary story. We're joined now by Jacoba Ballard and Jason Hyatt, who both feature in the Netflix documentary. Welcome. It's lovely to speak to you today. And Jacoba, let's start with you first of all, because this story really begins with you, because you were the first to ultimately discover his actions. So at what age did you know that you were donor conceived? Because you were quite young, weren't you? Um, yes, I was 10 years old okay. when my mother told me. <clears throat> And, um, and so after that, when did you think, right, well, I'm going to start exploring this and discovering whether or not maybe I have siblings or whether my, the donor is, is still around? Um, I tried exploring most of my adult life, but with, until commercial DNA testing came around, there was no possibility. <clears throat> so the age of 35 is when I finally said, OK, I'm going to do this. So <laughs> went on a registry found one lady that her parents went to Klein. I, we took DNA tests together. There was actually four of us. Um, and it just so happened all four of us were matches as sisters. And we found four others that had already tested and it went from there. And so you're watching this unfolding in front of your eyes. Could you have had any idea how big this was going to be? No. <laughs> um, I did say in the beginning, in shock, I said I wouldn't doubt it if we had hundreds. To the um, other seven, I was in complete shock. Um, did I think it was going to get this big? No. But for some reason, just in my gut, I felt like it was going to. Do you think there are more? Oh, I, I think there are. I think that after this documentary coming out that we're going to see an influx of new siblings. And so just explain that moment then when you discover that, you know, Klein is not only your father, but the father of all of these other siblings that you, that you met. How did that feel? Oh, a whole lot of emotions there. Um, you know, you go into it thinking that you're from donor conception and you're going to find maybe a couple siblings and you're okay with that. And there's, I mean, there's already so much around donor conception anyways, but then to find out that it was my mother's doctor, um, I had emotions for my mother, mm. knowing that she was lied to and had something inserted in her that she didn't consent to. And then for me, it was, I came from half of, I'm, I share half of his DNA. And it really messes with you mentally. I yeah. bet it does. Yeah. And you um, are one of the few that's actually met him. So tell, tell, tell us about that meeting. Oh, when meeting him, he was very straightforward, matter of fact, no empathy. Um, like I've said numerous times, it was just he brought a piece of paper when he tried to read a Bible verse to me. Um, and explain to me why I was so wanted in here using God as his justification. Um, but then he also brought a piece of paper and a notepad and took notes. Almost, I feel that he was grading us. Wow, God, that's extraordinary. Let's, um, let's bring Jason in now as well, because whilst all this was going on in your life, um, not that far away, Jason, you're growing up and you innately had these feelings that there was something different about you to your family and your Absolutely. father in particular. You felt that there was, there was something that was very different about the two of you. Absolutely. Um, it, it's just um, our personalities. He's a uh, genius, Mensa, um, book, bookworm, and, um, you know, 5'10", and, you know, I turned out to be 6'5", and athletic and sports-minded, so... It, I just knew at an early age, um, around maybe 12, that you know something wasn't all, something wasn't right. Um, I grew up a little bit, you know, about probably about 15, and started asking. Well, you know, they, you know, unfortunately lied. You know, that's what the doctor told them to do to us. So, 
um, just lie, lie, lie. And finally, I just came to my mom and just said, I have your hair, I have dad's hair, and obviously I have mine. Do I have to go take care of this on my own? And she immediately started crying. So it was, it was definitely a shock, um, and, and it's definitely been a whirlwind. So uh, how did you find out? Uh, how did you know what had happened here well, and I, what I, you were part of? Cur right. Um, so I was in... Colorado at the time and one of my co-workers was doing the um, ancestry.com and she said look I got 10 to 15 hits um, you know you should do it too you know be fun to you know kind of see where you come from and you know kind of look at each other's ancestry so I did and when I you know when my results came back it was I think a little over 3,000 hits um, and immediately I just thought, oh, something's wrong. Well, you know, about five, 10 minutes later, I, I believe it was Julie the first time. And, and granted, the, I, this was such a shock that my memory of it was so distorted at the time. But I had Julie and, and Jacoba call me and it was the worst day of my life. I, I can't even really explain um, the, the true emotions that came over me because one, I knew who my father was um, and I've been looking for him for a long time. Um, and then I had to tell this to my mom and it's not just my story, it's my mom's, it's my dad's, it's you know everybody that was involved. So I, I just, I felt bad for my mom, my dad and you know everyone else that was involved. But yeah. I mean, this, is, this know, is messed with your Head. Oh yeah. Then every and every time now. I look in the mirror, it, 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 every it, time I look in the mirror, it's, yes. You say that it's taken you to the brink of suicide. Yes, it did. Um, and this is hard to even really talk about because I didn't really talk about it before. But yeah, it 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 put dark feelings um, in my head, and you know I um, ended up drinking and. Um, he went to a dark place, and next thing you know, I'm waking up on the ground with, um, you know, the ceiling fan next to me. So uh, it was just a rough, rough time in my life. Um, alone, uh, no family around, no friends around. And, you know, at the time, you know, my wife and I were, you know, going through issues and ultimately led to a divorce. So all of this at once was oh just... God. I can't imagine it's so much go, going on for you. Um, but I guess there's other things to consider here as well. And once you start realising that there are lots and lots of siblings all in kind of a 25 mile radius, then I guess there's the, the risks as well of sort of inadvertently meeting a sibling, having right. a relationship with a sibling. I mean, even now when you say, you know, we're 94 and counting, that list isn't over. This still could possibly happen. Jacoba, is that sort of a absolutely. very real thought? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> Not even for siblings only, but also for kids. Kids that um, are older could meet an aunt or an uncle, not just a cousin. And we've never been told when he started or when he stopped. We know he retired in 2009. So, you know, we could have siblings as young as 2009, 2010. Well, that, I mean, some siblings have suggested that they've inherited medical conditions. <clears throat> he has rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and so he would have been banned from actually being a donor had he declared that. Um, so right. all of these things... Uh, you, you've actually been unwell, haven't you, Jacob? And you, you say that that could be attributed to him. Um, yes. In 2020, I started getting really sick. Last year was the worst year. Um, there were, sorry, I'm going to cry. <laughs> there was a point in time that I, I thought I was going to die. Um, begged for medical history and was given none. My doctors still don't know what I have um, besides... They do say it's autoimmune, but they haven't pinpointed that down as far as well as an undiagnosed yeah. genetic disease and an IgG deficiency since birth. Uh, you, well, the um... Sorry, Pauls. The trial was in 2017. Um, he didn't go to jail. He received a one-year suspended sentence, a $500 fine 
which really, for what he's done, is extraordinary. Jacoby, you've successfully lobbied the Indiana government to create a law which means it's illegal for a fertility doctor to inseminate a patient with their own sperm, which you'd thought would have been there anyway. Um, and, uh, and, Jason, you're pushing for that law to be made federal. That would, that would make it illegal across uh, all of America. Well, yeah, actually, Jacoba is the one that's, you know, forefront of that. She's actually oh, talking to is. a senator in Oklahoma about that right now. How far do you think you'll get? Uh, I hope we get to the top. I mean, I, I know my sister, and she is a, a dog when it comes to this kind of stuff. She will not stop. She's, I mean, I, I'm not worried about it. I have one of the best advocates on my corner, so... Well, listen, thank you both for joining us uh, this morning. It's an extraordinary story. I hope you reach the ending uh, that you want it to. If you do want to watch the docuseries we're talking about, uh, Our Father is on Netflix now. Thank you both. Thank you both. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it.